You know, TechLinked is fine, but I'm considering a new show called TechLinked Light. We'll cut every sentence in half. I mean, you can extrapolate the rest of what I'm gonna. YouTube has brought back its premium light subscription option a year after canceling it. Apparently hoping it'll seem a bit more enticing to users now that they made it worse. See, the previous iteration of Premium Light, available in select EU nations, got you ad-free viewing, but not downloads or background play for half the cost of full premium. The new Premium Light, spotted by Threads and Reddit users in Australia, Germany, and Thailand, still costs around half a regular premium sub. The only change appears to be that instead of no ads, you now see limited ads. As seen in a screenshot posted by musician Jonah Manzano, YouTube says this means most videos are ad-free, except for music content and shorts, and there will be non-interruptive ads when you search and browse. And sure, the ads aren't barking at you like a dog, but just by being there, they interrupt my thoughts. YouTube confirmed to Android Authority that they're bringing the plan back, but instead of saying they're testing to see whether they can make more money while offering users a worse experience for the same price, they said they're testing a different version. That's not bad. Everybody's different. Some of us are worse. Microsoft and OpenAI have been thick as data thieves for years, but now a New York Times report says the two companies are getting on each other's neural networks. It technically still works. That's what Microsoft is getting a little competitive, putting more resources into building its own AI models, and OpenAI wants even more compute power. That's probably exacerbating another conundrum they're trying to figure out, the question of how and when exactly Microsoft is gonna see a return on the $14 billion they've invested in OpenAI, as the limited profit controlled by a nonprofit transforms into your garden variety for-profit company projecting itself to be both the doom and savior of the world, you know. According to the Times, some at OpenAI will blame Microsoft for not giving them the compute they need if some other company is first to achieve AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. However, according to a clause in their contract, if OpenAI does get to AGI, Microsoft loses access to the company's AI models. How did things get this bad? I don't know, maybe Sam Altman's been paying too much attention to his eyeball scanning crypto side hustle, WorldCoin, which just rebranded to be just World and unveiled a shiny new upgraded orb. Oh man, I thought that thing was done. Can't keep your eyes off that guy. But for all the tension, OpenAI and Microsoft are still good enough pals to bring the ChatGPT app to Windows. They press the launch button together. It was like they were practicing for the day they'll have to press the kill switch for the nihilistic machine god they built together, only for it not to work. And that's what friendship is all about. I learned that from Naruto. Twitter, aka X, is changing the meaning of the word block on the platform to mean only block engagement, in a similar way to how they changed the letter X to mean Facebook meets 4chan, with more ads somehow. When the change rolls out, blocking someone will still let them see your posts, but they'll be powerless to like, reply, or repost any of them. This way, blocked accounts can see if the blocker is sharing harmful or private information about them at the cost of the blocker's own privacy. But have you ever been blocked? It hurts. <laughs> But that's not the only tactically genius move by Twitter this week. They also updated their privacy policy to allow third parties to train AI on your data unless you go to the settings and opt out. And they changed their terms of service to require legal disputes to take place in a specific Texas court district presided over by the supposedly honorable Reed O'Connor, an investor in Tesla. Maybe Twitter's just grumpy. The EU just said the platform doesn't make enough revenue to fall under the Digital Markets Act, but it is subject to the Digital Services Act, under which Twitter is facing potential fines. The EU is reportedly mulling over whether to consider Elon Musk as the provider of X, meaning that revenue from his other non-publicly traded companies, SpaceX, Neuralink, XAI, and The Boring Company, would be used to calculate those fines. I bet he wishes he had a block button for the EU right now, you know what? I... Quick look, it's a sponsor! Boot.dev, which is an online self-paced course designed to teach you back-end web development in Python and Go, while feeling like you're playing an RPG. 
Because the smartest way to learn to code is to make sure you're never bored. You're gonna earn XP, level up, unlock achievements, and complete quests to get a top spot in the global leaderboard. The platform's designed to get you writing a ton of code because getting your fingies on the keyboard is the only way to really learn. No one knows that more than Boot.dev's very active Discord community. It's there to help if you ever get stuck on your coding challenges. Boot.dev never wants a student feeling like they spent money on something that isn't helping. So they offer a 30 day, no questions asked refund policy and a free demo of every course and its interactive features. Click the link in the description and use code TECHLINKED to get 25% off your first payment for boot.dev. That's 25% off your first month or your first year, depending on the subscription you choose. Quick look, there's some bits over there. What? I'm just kidding. They're right here. A federal judge in California has granted Google's request to delay an order that would have forced them to open up the Play Store to host other app stores after a court battle last year found the Play Store had become an illegal monopoly. This may give Google some time to appeal the whole ruling since they argue you can still download apps that aren't on the Play Store. It's Android, you can sideload. As an example, they say Fortnite can be downloaded in three whole ways through the Galaxy Store, sideloading, or the Epic Game Store except the Epic Game Store itself can only be sideloaded and Epic removed Fortnite from the Galaxy Store coincidentally in protest of how Samsung started blocking sideloading by default on their phone. So there's not only just one single option, it's objectively harder than using the Play Store. There's gotta be a word for that that makes one think of a round-faced cartoon man with a mustache and a top hat. His name's Uncle Pennybags. Uncle Pennybags? Researchers testing 6G wireless tech have managed to transmit data at 938 gigabits per second, or around 117 gigabytes per second. While single data signals have been sent at over 1,000 gigabits per second, this test sent multiplex data across frequencies from 5 to 150 gigahertz using a combination of digital to analog converters, optically modulated signals, and frequency locked lasers to create the nerdiest sentence I think I've ever spoken. Now, of course, 6G won't provide a terabit per second download speed all the time, but if the ratio to average to top theoretical speed is anything like 5G's, Real world 6G could be 13,000 times faster. That may sound ridiculous to you, but actually, yes, I agree. Qualcomm has apparently canceled the Snapdragon dev kit and refunded all orders, according to Jeff Geerling, my internet dad. Gearling received an email confirming the news from Aero, the electronics company from which Gearling received his dev kit, eventually. Gearling initially expected to receive the dev kit in July, but didn't get it until last month. Gearling himself called the dev kit a missed opportunity, so I'm sure he'll be happy to get his money back. Maybe he can use it to buy a baseball glove and we could, I don't know, maybe play catch sometime. Gigabyte is launching a Thunderbolt 5 add-in card that it's named Thunderbolts 5, <laughs> a name that seems almost purposely designed to cause confusion. On one hand, it's great that users with older systems will be able to upgrade to Thunderbolt 5, but it's named like the bootleg ripoff of a more popular movie, like Pulp Faction or The Lion Queen. Thunderbolts 5 is a certified add-in card that has a pair of six pin PCIe power connectors and grants full Thunderbolt 5 functionality, including up to 80 gigabits per second of bi-directional bandwidth or 120 gigabits per second unidirectional. That's really cool, but it's a bit like instead of being named Robin, Batman's sidekick was called Batman's. <laughs> Batman's really thinks he's gonna stop crime? No. <laughs> and Moly Robotics wants you to buy this personal chef robo arm. Well, probably not you, unless you've got a spare $105,000 burning a hole in your pocket and your spouse got mad the last time you bought a yacht without discussing it first. The cooking machine has one clear flaw in that it has no means of sensing its environment. It requires a human operator to prepare and position the ingredients where it expects them to be. And at that point, I, you might as well just make your own food. The or, bot, huh? Or, or pay somebody <laughs> to make, use the machine to make your food. Probably hire a pretty good chef for that price. <laughs> the bot also doesn't seem prepared for any kind of improvisation. You'll need to pick from a pre-approved list of dishes of which there are currently 12. 
Hope you're a big fan of spaghetti puttanesca, which, fun fact, means prostitute spaghetti. <laughs> what? <laughs> but to learn more inappropriately named pasta dishes, you'll have to come back on Monday. And there'll also be tech news, but yeah.